Well, we're into the virtual San Diego Comic-Con. There's a few bits of comic news, so I just wanted to wrap up things. Uh, I'll hit the one that everybody's talking about at the end, so we actually get the news first, and then we get to um, uh, the the Tom King uh, bit, which is just uh, a distraction, I think, in a lot of cases from the news. But let me explain why, and, and let's get into what we've learned today. Hey everybody, this is Perch. It's San Diego Comic-Con, so there's a bunch of news out there, and I'm going to try and cover it just a, at a quick, kind of almost rapid pace to give you a sense of what's being announced and, and what kind of things are being teased. In a lot of cases, if you haven't been to a convention and you've never sat in on a panel, what you'll quickly discover is that you're not necessarily given news, or, or you're given some of it, but you're, you're given very little hard facts. Generally, you're given kind of hints and teases and other things like this may be happening or keep your eye on this character because something will happen, which I suppose is news. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not discounting, but it's a lot more kind of, uh, you know, hunches and hints than actual hard news. So at any rate, um, where where are we going with all this? So uh, first off, uh, we learned that uh, basically in Tom King's uh, Rorschach that the detective, there's a detective character that's investigating Rorschach and kind of this, this plot of violence against uh, the president. And this detective um, is apparently Batman uh, or is Bruce Wayne or, or is some... Uh, it, it sounds that way. So if we don't, we, again, it kind of comes into this bit of a, a hint more than anything else. But Tom King basically said, you know, it, it, the detective is who you think it is. So, um, you know, a lot of people speculate, okay, well, I, that's Batman. That'd be very weird. And so I think there's some some things to kind of come up to speed on there. But at any rate, it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's apparently Batman, which is, I think is probably the biggest kind of hard news we've had coming out of things. Um, otherwise, we've had some comments on DC around their, uh, you know, a kind of big event in the midst of the big event. What are they, Marvel? Come on, what's going on here? But it is this endless winter. So we don't know completely where it's going to land, but uh, the endless winter will be a quote unquote big DC story. They haven't confirmed that it's a, it's a, it's a big deal and that it is is likely. Uh, Justice League related. Now, it's intending to launch in December, and it's it sounds like you know I'm, I'm speculating here, but it looks like kind of a uh, a mini event with an event. Keep in mind that uh, Death Metal is still going on at the time, so it's this kind of how this fits in there is is hard to say. There's a lot of speculation on on what exactly this is, but it sounds like a little maybe a Justice League imprint to kind of tie up what's going on there. I don't think this is a a hint of what comes after. This is what like 5G has morphed into. It's um, it's just a, a story arc, if you will, a story arc that is maybe a little bit more like the um, uh, Last Rites uh, storyline out of Spider-Man, kind of a, you know, may tie in a few things, but that's Endless Winter coming from DC. Um over on um, hopping back to Fantastic Four, we've talked about this big status quo the change that's going to occur in that title. And while we don't, you know, we, we're just again getting teased. That there's a status quo. Um, what you are getting as a fallout of Empire is that we've got these two kids, the Scroll and the Cree kid, that they kind of picked up and and is there. And they're, you know, it's it's two in theory enemies who have fought for many, many years in this uh, kind of engineered battle dome, um, but they are going to be uh, either joining the team directly or, or going to be sticking around as kind of the two Fantastic Four kids kind of um, uh, bringing them all together. So at any rate, um, it is, uh, it, it, that, that's some of the fallout we're getting there. In term, and there's there's promising to be more. They're promising the return of a cosmic character believed to be dead. That's the Silver Surfer, all likelihood. Uh, but there's a number of other teases uh, that were going on. We're hearing that um, Storm and Cypher, for example, of X-Men uh, characters have a big relationship uh, or a big role to play in, uh, in X, uh, Ten of Swords. And that uh, Storm is, is more than likely kind of this mystery villain that's been shown in the promo art, this Egyptian style uh, kind of villain. She's been doing some stuff. You had to be reading along with Hickman's giant size books, but if you have, you know that Storm is under some threat. 
there's a there's a problem that has infected her and that there's you know there's potentially a a big issue there and so um, it, it 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 seems at least on some level likely that storm is wrapped up in that potentially the kind of the big villain or she's been converted or, or something has gone on over there we will see but we're also getting some uh, some stuff with cipher and and that's fun I mean everybody everybody likes cipher uh, nice to see him getting some some love again after he was killed in Fall of Mutants, which is a, a big thing. That was a, that was hard to say. So uh, we're also hearing that uh, Captain Britain is going to have a, a bigger presence uh, in the Marvel Universe going forward, that uh, it, it's not necessarily spinning out of Ten of Swords, but that there is um, there is a, a big Captain Britain bit that we will get, and, and we're going to try and get that comic going again. Uh, now we have some, some. I mean, you know, Al Ewing uh, over there in, in the UK, maybe this is something he wants to do. I don't know, but, but Captain Britain coming, so everybody loves their new titles. Uh, <laughs> why not? Um, and then there's, you know, the, the other bit, at least in terms of uh, Dawn of X news, um, the externals will be having a role in uh, Ten of Swords, not the... I think they're not the primary villains, but they are at least going to be showing up on some level, and um, you know maybe they're 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 involved somehow. Um, they'll be uh, part of the conflict. The externals is a group that uh, we haven't really seen for for quite a while, and they were I believe first introduced by Rob Liefeld over in um, in his X Force book. But we did hear a lot of uh, just general information about X Men and everything else, and. And um, Hickman kind of basically said that, uh, you know, if you look at what's happening with the X-Men and you look at what comes kind of later, uh, that, that none of this ends well. And I, I think he's talking, you know, it was hard to tell from the comments if he was talking about Ten of Swords or he's talking about kind of bigger, just the X-Men in general and what follows all this. But the belief, at least, is that Ten of Swords ends with a bit of a downer and it ends with a bit of a, a the, the threat kind of coming into place. We've had now a year and change of the X-Men living on Party Island and having a good time. And now it looks like that um, maybe we're going to step into the second part where the threats kind of get get amassed and, and uh, bad things happen to them. So the last little bit I'll mention here is, um, uh, you know, I, and I, I, I feel like I'm almost dragging my feet uh, to get involved. Oh, no, there is one little bit of news. Um, Antithesis, which is a series by Mark Wade and Neil Adams. Uh, it's a fantastic four story that Neil Adams apparently uh, asked to be a part of this comic. It's a limited series is supposed to uh, transform Galactus. He's going to have a new status quo coming out at the end of it. And it's a status quo we will recognize. So that's a mysterious you know, way to put it. So we'll see what, what kind of comes out of that. But uh, apparently we're getting a new status quo out of Galactus, which is a different new status quo from the revelations that just came out in Donnie Cates' Thor book or some of the, you know, turning him briefly good over in in uh, in the Ultimates, in the Ultimates 2. So it, it, it will, it we'll all see. But anyway, we expect for a lot of news to kind of come out of, of Comic-Con. Uh, it's virtual, so we're seeing like way too many like Zoom uh, videos of people in their faces in the living room. I, I'll be glad when that is. You know, I never thought I'd long for the day of seeing the the lame uh, San Diego Comic Con tables with the the little uh, tray, you know, table curtain on there, and and I find myself missing that, which is a very weird place to be. But uh, regardless, let's hit the last bit of the news because it is the one that uh, everybody, despite all the things going in comics, what we want to talk about on Twitter is Tom King and tweeting. So Tom King basically tweeted out. Uh, disappointment in Jay Lee for doing a variant cover. Um, and, and there's a very, so back up a second, Tom King's writing a story, Rorschach, we mentioned earlier, there's a uh, cover, which is a kind of nice cover of a red thumbprint that has uh, Rorschach there in the middle of it. And that was the uh, original cover. But then um, th th there's, because it's variant time, uh, we get a, a Jay Lee cover of a Rorschach lifting dumbbells with uh, Dr. Manhattan's face on it. And, um, you know, why not? And it is a, you know, it, it's a variant cover. So, you know, and it, not a very good one, to be honest. I like Jay Lee's art quite a bit, but this, this cover is not really, not for me, as they say. So uh, Tom King writes that today DC put out an alternate cover for Rorschach by Jay Lee, who has also done covers for Comicsgate, a hate group. DC does not consult creators on alternate covers. I reached out to them to express my deep disappointment, far as I'm concerned. This is a cover to Rorschach, number one, and he puts the original cover on. So um, 
I, I, you know, and, and then what happened is apparently somebody got a hold of Jay Lee and, um, and he really had no clue of what Comics Gate was uh, until recently. And uh, apparently he said he has been turning down co- cover requests now from that group. And when he did this original cover, which I believe was for Cyberfrog, uh, he was kind of unaware he was just doing a cover for somebody because people, people needs their money, as they say. So um, what do you make of all this? I mean, this could be a whole video itself, but a lot of people are going to, there's going to be a million videos on you know, Tom King trying to cancel Jay Lee. I mean, my perspective is this. Um, I think right now, in this current moment, when we have a lot of instability in comics and people are trying to get paid, and there are uh, there's there's a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, medical benefits are as important as ever with a virus going on, and a lot of creators don't have it. And people are trying to make money. I think uh, dunking on people because they did a cover for a group you dislike, either you know fairly or unfairly, is poor form. Um, at, at best, I'm, I'm being as polite as possible. I think that's that's a lousy thing to do, especially when you are um, and you forgive the term, you're you're a you know, for lack of a better word, a privileged white guy who's got a you know a sewn up dedicated job at DC, and you're doing stuff for Warner Bros. on the movie end, and you're probably pulling in a lot of money to go uh, poking at at a freelance artist whose you know life uh, you know and his jobs go month by month, and to kind of uh, you know out him. For doing this, I think is is pretty lousy. I, I think that that's that's not cool um, as a as a guy who's got a lot of you know stature and 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 security. You know, it's it's a, somebody with a lot of security picking on somebody with very little. And you could say, well, he did it to himself. He did these comics for this this comics kid group. And and if that's your stance, that's that's fine. It's it's your opinion. However, um, I think if if you don't, the, the crazy part is, I don't think anybody would have known any of this had this tweet not gone out and then got some attention and got news articles and everything written. I think most of it, I was completely unaware that Jay Lee had did a cover for, uh, I guess, Cyberfrog. I had no idea. And I think that probably sums up the majority of people. So to do this, you shine a spotlight on a group that you dislike, which will drive more attention to them and probably more money. So I think that's a weird strategy. Uh, if, if you dislike them, I think you're just driving funding that direction. And of course, um, again, whether you like them or not, you know, Comicsgate will definitely, uh, you know, finance off of this and will, you know, that will raise more money. So you, you, you kind of, the, the fight kept going for, for no good reason, especially if it's true and Jay Lee had already kind of decided he wasn't going to do more work for them in the future, then you just created a big fuss for nothing. And I, I don't see the value, especially when it's San Diego Comic-Con weekend, the industry's trying to get back up on its feet. We're trying to get some excitement and some new news out there. Was now the time to launch this stuff out there? I mean, I get that a lot of the people who do not really have any jobs or or anything to announce in San Diego uh, at the con are probably poking and prodding, saying, hey, did you see this? Look at this bad guy over here. But, you know, like for the rest of us, you know, we're trying to grow this industry. And I, I just don't see the strategy of how this does that. Uh, my own personal opinion, uh, again, on whether it's good, bad aside, I'm just talking pure tactics. It's a strange move. But anyway, what do you think? On all of the below, uh, what do you, are you excited by some of the announcements coming out? Um, I mean, it's weird because the announcement that you know potentially it's Batman who's going to be going up against Rorschach in that title um, or you know an alternate universe version of Batman or who knows what's going on there, the t- t- detective. If that is true, like that's the big news. I hate to see this kind of variant cover controversy go on as the the leading story. Like if you look at a lot of news sites now, they're 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 running with the Tom King called out Jay Lee, as opposed to hey, potentially there's a major development in this comic. That is uh, strange. That is just strange to me. Anyway, that's my opinion on it. What's yours? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, like, subscribe. It's uh, San Diego Comic Con time, so there'll be plenty of more news and and other little information as I get it. But uh, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter or Facebook, and uh, shoot me a mail at comicsperch at Gmail. And thanks for listening.